everybody to the continuation of our recap of Pyanodons. And we've been playing this a bit on Twitch. Sorry about no update on this last week. Uh, last week and the week before that was a bit heavy at work. And um, one of the streams I did on Pyanodons was a little bit sleep deprived. Actually, the recap for this one over here right now. So it took a while to get the recap actually done. Actually, since then, we had another stream of Pyanodons. And today, of course, will be another stream because it's Monday. Well, not for you. It will probably not be Monday for you, but, well, so be it. Nevertheless, we are going to continue our recap of our Pyanodon playthrough. And the big thing, the most important thing, the absolute most, most, most important thing we did on stream was make freaking circuits. There they are. We made the circuit factory, and it took a bit. There were some interesting surprises in making this one, some things I did not really expect uh, to see. This machine over here is not really making circuits any which way fast. Actually, uh, we're missing, like, printed circuit substrates over here. Uh, this whole machine over here is not balanced at all. Doesn't matter. As long as it's making circuits, that's the important part. Because circuits do open up the most important thing in Factorio. And oh my god, have I been missing them. Uh, it opens up the ability for us to make splitters. <laughs> And with splitters, this base over here has already been cleaned up a bit. Uh, there used to be some, some very weird split inserter mechanics over here. And the simple splitter over here just takes care of it. And boom, it's gone. Perfect. But how does one make circuits in Pyanodons? Oh, well, that is what this episode will be all about. Because making circuits in Pyanodons is not as trivial as you might think. Because you already need, like, all of these items over here. We need copper, zinc batteries. We will need ceramic capacitors. We will need air core inductors. We will need high power resistors. We're going to need some printed circuit substrate tier 1. We're going to need some vacuum tubes and some solder. Let's maybe start off with the solder because the solder is the easiest. It comes from over here. And solder is just the combination of lead and tin. Now, last time around, I think we had not set up yet any kind of smelting for lead or for tin or for zinc. And that is something we definitely did um, by means of outposting. We got an outpost all the way over here where we mined the lead. And I think this one currently is working, yes. Uh, and making the outposts also was a bit surprising in the end. Because not only do we get lead ore back, we get ash back, and we have to bring fuel over there because the miners that we use over there, the liquid miners, which we can find over here, uh, they do require a liquid for drilling, and they require um, a, a burnable fuel to actually operate. So we had to bring some extra materials over. Same is true over here for the tin and for the zinc. The tin over here requires steam to work, and the zinc over here requires aromatics to work. Uh, and the uh, lead over here requires acetylene to work. So we had to make an acetylene making machine. I think we did that in the last recap episode. I'm not quite sure. But the acetylene making machine is all the way over here in the corner down here somewhere. By the way, this over here is where we smelt our plates at the moment. The smelting over here is pretty much exactly the same as any kind of smelting we've done in the past. Uh, there's nothing special over here. These recipes over here, they suck because, well... Uh, you need a whole bunch of ore to make not a lot of plates. There will be better recipes soon, but not right now. Yes, the acetylene. That's over here. I think we talked about this the last time around. And the acetylene over here uh, is more or less made out of coke. The coke machine over here is a bit empty. I will probably have to check up what's going on over there. But you can see over here that we also have our tin ore belt and our zinc ore belt. And technically, there should be a coke belt going this way. But I guess this thing over here has been running out for a while. Oh, yes, it has. <laughs> Where is it? Is that coke over there? Um, yep, yeah, that's coke over here. Perfect. So we'll probably have to check out what's going on over here. By the way, this over here, this is one of the first farms you will have to make in Pyanodons. This is the Moondrop farm. And you need the Moondrops to make... your. The Moondrops are your first source of methane gas over here. And you do need methane gas to make simple circuits. So do get ready to make one of these if you want to play Pi. I think I kind of overbuilt this one a bit. But then again, it looks pretty. Also, it's a very efficient pollution sink. Each farm over here consumes 735 pollution per minute. Uh, if we take a look at the pollution map, you can also see that the pollution over here just gets synced over here straight away. It is a good idea to maybe spread these around a little bit around the base. So that you have pollution a little bit more under control. 
But for now, we do it over here. And, well, how does the recipe work over here? Well, pretty simple. You take some seeds. You add some water. You make moon drops. You then take the moon drops and turn them back into seeds. Then you take the seeds. You bring them over here. You add some water and some carbon dioxide. And you get methane out of it. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Nothing special. Nothing magical over there. It's just a farming building. Uh, of course, the important part is these farms over here... Uh, they do operate by putting um, the moon drops themselves as modules inside of the farm. So you do need to, to breed a couple of these moon drops and get the farm going slowly over time. And then this machine over here will have a crafting speed. If I take all of these out, you will see that this machine over here has a crafting speed of 0 0.1, which is basically nothing. Even worse, it tells me that it will not work because there is no plants in there. If I put them in there, then the crafting speed... I think it should go up to 1. There's probably a miscalculation in there. I don't care. Uh, and then the um, uh, building becomes operational as well. And that's how pretty much every farm in Pyanodon works. Like everything from creatures to farms. Every, everything works like that. Good. In the meantime, uh, well, this is one of the first things I think we made after we got access to circuits. Or was that before that? Let's have a look at this. This is our Rectosol. That is before. No, not the Rectosol. Our Retorter. Um... This basically sinks kerogene. It takes kerogene, turns it into shale oil, and then the shale oil over here returns that into light oil and heavy oil. The heavy oil we turn into kerosene, which we have a bit of. Sadly, the condensates, we can't do anything with it right now, so we have to just sink it. Uh, and the light oil goes back into the big light oil machine over here. Good. Oof. That gasoline over there is gone. Lovely. Um... I might be able to fix something over here. Let me just reopen these pipes over there. There we go. Good. Well, is that also the reason why this machine over here stopped? I think that might have been the reason because I've, I'm pretty sure we were backed up over here on aromatics. Yeah, every now and then we have to switch over um, usage of aromatics to gasoline and back again because, well... <laughs> you can't use mixed liquids to fire up these buildings, which is a bit annoying, but so be it. Good, 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 good. So, back to our circuit machine then. Uh, our circuit machine is all the way over there. Uh, and let's have a look at what we need to make over here. So, technically, I wanted to make this way bigger, but we did kind of run into one surprise, and that is, if you take a look at a simple electronics factory over here, you do need 540 iron plate and 230 copper plate to make one of these. To make uh, the PCB factory... You will need two of these to make one PCB factory. So one PCB factory over here is 1,500 iron plates and 715. Doesn't really sound like a much, but if you are making plate as fast as turning eight pieces of iron ore uh, into one iron plate, it is a lot. This is a lot. And to make matters even worse, the chip shooter over here, never mind. <laughs> I thought this one also required an electronics factory. It does not, but it still eats up 504 iron plate. Good. So we made one, two, three, four. Yeah, four electronics machines and one PCB factory. So a total of 3,000 iron plate over here, which is quite a lot. But making these, these things by themselves is pretty straightforward. For example, the vacuum tubes over here is just iron plate, copper plate, graphite, glass, and vacuum. Graphite over here is just cooked up uh, coke. So we have everything we need over here so we can make these tubes over here. Same for the air core inductors. We get a better recipe for these. Uh, ceramics and copper cable. Copper cable, well, straightforward. Do it like this. Ceramics, we make that out of clay. Clay we just get out of the ground by digging it up with steam. And then we cook it up with some coke and we get ceramics. So that's easy as well. Same is true over here for the high power resistors. It's just coke, glass, and tin. Once you have those available, you just can make these resistors, no problem. And same is true over here for the ceramic capacitors. We make some more ceramics over here, add some tin to it, and boom, we got the capacitors. On the other side, we got the copper zinc batteries over here. These are a little bit more complicated. We do need cellulose and we do need saline water. Now, saline water, the easiest way to get saline water is by mining up salt. We have not found a single salt mine yet. <laughs> Salt is a thing, is a resource that you can find out there somewhere. We have not found it yet. It is probably around somewhere, but we have not seen any salt yet. 
Um, so how do you get salt? Well, you can just turn stone, aka rocks, into rock salt and use that for saline water. Um, so that is our source for salt over here. It's also our source over here for sand and for gravel. I think we made this for our concrete. Yeah. Uh, the concrete we need for, for something else. And actually, that was a stream later that we did that. So ignore that. That does not exist for now. <laughs> Good. But back to the copper zinc batteries over here. Yeah, we need copper plates, cellulose, zinc plates, and saline water. Cellulose, pretty easy to make. You just combine wood and limestone, and suddenly you get cellulose. I think we have a better recipe available for this. Um, yes, we do. We can also take wood and sodium hydroxide. It makes a bit more. Uh, actually, it makes four times the amount. This over here makes one every ten. This one over here makes two every five. So it's four times as productive. Uh, but we don't really have a good source of sodium hydroxide yet. So we are not really doing this one yet. Good. And then, of course, the most complicated thing to make uh, is the printed circuit substrate. Now, you might think, wait, this is just copper, uh, copper plate and formica. But the formica one is the one that is a little bit annoying. Formica is made out of treated wood, sap, raw fiber, and formaldehyde. Now, formaldehyde over here, we get by combining copper plate and methane into formaldehyde. And then treated wood, that is the thing. Oh, we don't have a radar yet. <laughs> uh, you basically, for treated wood, you combine up um, normal wood and creosote oil. And then the fiber, the fiber we can get straight out of wood. So that's what we're doing over here. Just take some wood, turn it into the fiber, and then it goes all over here. And then the sap. Yeah, for the sap, we have these sap trees. These over here make one sap every 20 seconds. We got 10 of them. Uh, for now, that's fine. But if you want to make this any bigger, it will have to be bigger. And then you bring everything together over here and you get yourself some circuits. Now, again, this machine over here is not really making circuits any which way fast. It, it makes, I think, like five every now and then, uh, which is good. Uh, because we mostly need this to make the buildings at the moment. We don't need circuits yet for research. So the first research pack we're going to make does not require circuits, which is very important, uh, so that we can focus on some more optimizations. And I think we've already started working on that a bit. Uh, technically, we've already researched all the way up to the next science pack. So the Pi science pack over here is available to us. And the thing that is complicated to make is the rubber. <laughs> and why not combine like both recaps into one recap episode? Then I only have to do one of these. So uh, that was the, the, the previous stream. And then the stream after that was us trying to make our way over to latex. Now for latex, the whole latex procedure is changed. <laughs> Let's put it like that. It has changed. We've already made the latex build over here. This build over here is going to make us all the latex that we need. And how much latex is this going to make? Well, if we take a look at this machine over here, we are going to be making two latex per 10 seconds. So 0 0.2 latex per second. Yeah, this machine over here is not going to be fast, but this is as big as we're going to make it. We don't need it any which way faster. Now, how do you make latex? Well, quite easily, you take a latex slab and you cook it up with steam, and then you get latex. How do you make the latex slab? Well, for this, you need some sodium alginate and some creamy latex and some formic acid. You can see over here that the formic acid is the one thing that we're still missing. Uh, we're working on that actually right now as we speak. Uh, for this, we need another farm, an animal farm in this case. Good. The sodium alginate is just basic resources we have lying around. Stone, limestone, seaweed, add some water, and then you get some sodium alginate. Uh, as for the creamy latex, that is also pretty straightforward. You take some limestone, some sap, some water, and out comes the creamy latex. Now, for the... What's it called again? For the um, formic acid, we are going to need the slaughterhouse because we will have to start to breed some rocks. And you can already see the little buckets over here in the corner. This is our little breeding ground. Um, this is where we breed our rocks. Um, these could be considered chickens. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they grow in eggs. So I guess these are chickens. Maybe these are spider chickens. Who knows what, what these are. But this over here is our little breeding cycle. We got this machine over here, which is the reproductive complex. 
In here, we add some water barrels, some caged creatures, some sap, and some moss, and out comes some cocoons, um, maybe some caged creatures, maybe some cages, and then the whole thing over here goes on the loop. The cocoons go over here, where we turn the cocoons into more caged creatures. Technically, this is net positive, and it is actually net positive because we are slowly growing the numbers over here. We got 14 over here, and we got 14 over here. Perfect, so that's 28. Uh, and as you can see, these over here work like the, the farm, which means we need to make a couple of these over here to even operate the building. And once this over here operates, we then need to put them in here where we will turn them into meat, chitin, guts, brain, a cage, and our formic acid. Now, how much formic acid do we need? This one over there makes 200 formic acid per 10 seconds. And if we go over here, we will see that we need 100 every 5 or 200 every 10. Which means one of these matches exactly to this build over here. Which means we will need to make a farm big enough to match the input of this machine over here. And I think that's the thing we started working on down here. Now here's where it gets a little bit hazy because last week we only had one pie stream. Uh, because for the other one, well, I had a bit of a bad kebab and I had to cancel that stream. But this down here is going to be the farm where we breed our rocks, which we are going to be slaughtering. Uh, we do need to make sure that we breed them first, keep the breeding cycle going, and then only the excess of creatures that are not part of the breeding cycle will go into the slaughterhouse, which will then be turned into all of the juicy bits. And with that, we can then make our latex. Now, why do we need the latex again? Well, we need the latex to... Oops, put this one down real quick. Uh, we need the latex to make... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. To make the rubber stoppers. And once we have the rubber stoppers, we can then make... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Is it even in here? It should be in here. Mm, it might not be in here. Ooh. No, we do that somewhere else. We definitely do that somewhere else. Uh, we can see it over here. There we go. Yeah, we need to make the rubber stoppers to make the glassware and then we take the glassware as well as some basic substrate and turn that into the pie science pack which we make in the research center and the research center over here requires simple circuit boards and that's the whole reason why we had to make the circuits so that we can even make the building that makes the advanced science which means the next tier of science is not based upon uh, circuit production which is great because the next tier unlocks a whole bunch of great things uh, we're going to be unlocking the first level of ore processing for all of the ores. We're going to unlock a couple of new farms. We're going to unlock a better recipe for the rocks, which is very good. Um, what else is in here? There's a whole bunch of good stuff. And the most important thing, well, actually two very important things in here. We're going to unlock construction bots. Love that. Uh, logistic bots come a little bit later, but only a little bit. Not that much later, but um, yeah, construction bots. And of course, very important, trains. We will unlock freaking trains and i'm very much looking forward to trains also we unlock all kinds of power generating systems which is more or less the, the hearthstone of the new piaton where we get access to um non-renewable in, in, in thingies and then coal power over here where we get access to the coal power plant like this one over here now i'm very curious about the coal power plant i'm very curious how these things over here will be working i have no clue yet but i'm very much looking forward to it to see how this over here will work uh, I guess we're going to need to make some turbines and stuff like that and hook them up accordingly. But then we can make better power than we currently do by just burning coal in a boiler. <laughs> Good. I guess that will be it for today. Uh, I kind of want to keep these recaps at like 20 minutes. So if you do like what you see, please do check out the stream. Uh, <laughs> Twitch.tv slash botviking. Or if you do like what you see here on YouTube, please do click like, support. Uh, no, support us on the button. <laughs> Click the like button, leave a comment, or the subscribe button. Every one of those actions does help me out in growing this YouTube channel to something bloody amazing. Uh, and, well, that will be it. Without further ado, I wish you all an amazing evening, and until next time, see you around!